feature selection is critical for improving your model, particularly when you have analytical data that's very wide and sometimes those variables aren't very informative. Said another way, they don't help us to discriminate between class A and class B. So in this data set of plastics, I really want to build a model with variables that only help me discriminate polyethylene versus polypropylene. If we can do that using techniques in the scikit-learn library, those techniques are going to be the s classif and the select k best from the feature selection module. Some of this other stuff we've demonstrated in previous videos where we're going to use a logistic regression classifier and in combination with grid search tv to find the optimal set of parameters and a pipeline to allow us to chain those methods together to build a classification model for our various plastics. This data comes from near IR data of several plastics, high density polyethylene, low density polyethylene, polyester, polypropylene, and a few others. And we want to build a strong model, but we're going to focus on removing the variables that are less informative. We could do that by creating our pipe here. So our first step is future selection. We're going to use the select K best, and then our scoring function will be this as classic which essentially computes an ANOVA or F value for our different variables. And the values that will survive this analysis are gonna be the variables that are most distinctive or most discriminatory between our various classes of materials. And so we can use a P value to help us to determine that. But because we don't know where to start, this is where the ability to use grid searching is really important. And so we're going to just span between one feature and 50 features to figure out what is the right number to give us our best model performance. And that will all be handled by our grid search CV. And so we have our pipe log reg, which is this pipeline here. We have our parameter grid, which is this dictionary there. We're going to do five fold cross validation and we're going to score the grid based on model accuracy. Once we do that, we automatically get this new model object here. That is the, the grid search log reg, and we can fit that model on the training on the entire training data and then return the best parameters as well as how well this model performed indicated by the best score. So let me run this cell and it's going to take a few seconds as it moves through each of these values. And after about seven seconds, we can see that it has chosen 41 variables to be the most optimal for this data set. And our best accuracy is about 92%. And so you can see we're just selecting 41 wavelengths that are going to help improve this model. If you want to visualize the best estimator a little bit differently, we can run this grid search log reg best estimator attribute. And we will get this visual here where we can see we have our select a best K equals 41 the logistic regression with all the parameters I've instantiated in the beginning. But of course, we can search all of these parameters in the pipeline or even add new steps. So there's a couple other things I want to do to help us to understand the impact of those variables on our data and on our model. And so what I'm going to do is use the best estimator and go into the name steps called future selection. And that is the step that was indicated by this list here. So this is the future selection and the select K best. And what I want to do is create this object, this best K best here so that we can then figure out what those index values are, those column indices so that we can filter the original data set and create a way to visualize the impact of this future selection process. In the next set of lines, we're going to then take that selected future indices and get the actual names of those columns. So here we're going to get a list of index values. And now we're going to get those column names and we're going to store that as selected feature names. When I run that, you can see that these are various wavelengths, a few at the beginning of our spectrum and many more towards the end of the spectrum, you know, 2100 and beyond that seem to bear the most amount of information about the various classes of plastics. Now I want to plot a parallel coordinates plot. And this is one way that we can see the impact of these 41 variables in a way that will kind of look like a near IR spectrum, but not quite because these are now no longer continuous. We're filtering based on the importance of these various features. And so how I generate this particular figure is less important. There are many ways to generate a parallel coordinates plot, but I want to show what it looks like when we can combine 
what we've done for future selection, how we built the model, and what that data approximately looks like. And so when we do this and I zoom out a little bit, you can see that we have what looks like a rough, poorly resolved spectrum or set of spectra for our data. And so when I'm coloring by the plastic type, so this pink color is high density polyethylene, this gold-ish color is polypropylene, the green at the top is my polyethylene terephthalate, and our bottom trace is the low density polyethylene, and then the polyester in purple kind of moves to the middle. You can see at various wavelengths, these vertical bars represent a feature. We can see that how the model is attempting to pick these out. For instance, we can see that these features here, we have a lot of separation between all of the plastics. Whereas there are some other areas where it's a little bit less clear, but it's really good for picking out polyethylene terephthalate and this green trace here, but discriminating the others is really in this region here. So now we have many ways to not only filter the data, but also visualize the impact, particularly when we have data like NARIR data, mass spec data, chromatography data, where it's really wide and you want to see the impact of that future selection. If this video was helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.